So today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. We have a special guest and we're gonna talk about a fascinating interplay between your genes and your environment. Freckles. So my name is Alex Danis and I'm a genetics PhD student. And my name is Trina Espinoza, AKA Miss Pedophile, and I like to talk about the science behind beauty. I have freckles. And I don't, which is a total bummer because right now freckles are totally trending in beauty. While trends of earlier decades favored covering up those freckles with heavy makeup, more recent beauty trends are encouraging us to play up freckles, which are thought to be more youthful and natural in appearance. Earlier this year, I saw lots of beauty tutorials that used eyeliner to dot a few extras across your face, or Instagram hashtags that showed serious beauty devotees going as far as having freckles tattooed across their face. So that has me posing the question, what is a freckle, Alex? Yeah, so people use the word freckle to refer to two different things. So the first are ethylides. So these are the freckles we generally think of in children. They're sort of small reddish brown freckles that appear in the spring and summer on your face, back, and arms. So areas that are exposed to the sun. But sometimes people also use the word freckle to refer to lentigines. So these are sort of darker spots that appear with age that don't really change with the seasons and that occur after years of sun damage. Okay, so those are like age spots. Yeah. So today when we talk about the word freckle, we're gonna talk about ephylids. But I think before we do that, we need to put some freckles on our face. Totally. Okay, ready? Here we go. Yeah. What do you think? So let's talk about what makes a real freckle. A real freckle is caused by melanin. That is a pigment that gives hair and skin its color. A freckle forms on the skin when a cell called a melanocyte overproduces melanin in response to UV radiation from the sun. The melanin is packaged into melanosomes and melanocytes inject them into skin cells as they migrate towards the upper layers of skin. When this happens in a concentrated area, it is called a freckle, but not everybody has them. So is that a genetics thing? It is. So some people are more prone to getting freckles than others, and this can totally be traced back to your genetics, meaning that it can also be inherited and passed down through families. Okay. So while there are genes that make you more susceptible to getting freckles, you also need that UV light exposure to actually have them happen. This is why we think about them like in the spring and summer when kids are outside playing in the sun. Exactly. It's the environment and your genetics that creates a freckle. So how did researchers first figure out that this was like a genetic trait? So I found this insane experiment from 1982 that I like to put it into the category of crazy things that college students will do for science. <laughs> I think I've done some of those. Yeah, me too. So the researchers took 18, 18 to 23 year olds, and they split them up into two groups of known frecklers and known non-frecklers. Hmm. How did they make that determination? So the known frecklers all had visible spots on them at the time and a childhood history of freckling, and the known non-frecklers had neither of those things. So the researchers took these two groups and they exposed areas of their lower back, which is generally protected from the sun and has few freckles, to intense amounts of UV light. Yikes, that sounds scary. Yeah, it is scary and I would totally not have wanted to be a subject in this study. <laughs> but what they found was that all of the known frecklers actually had freckles appear after this exposure and none of the known non-frecklers did. I see. So they figured out that there was probably a genetic component to this. You had to be susceptible to it before the UV exposure to actually get freckles. Let's get to the nitty gritty. What genes are associated with freckling? I hear there's like five? Yeah, so there are about five genes that have been associated with freckling at this point. But the most well-studied and probably the most impactful is a gene called MC1R, which codes for a receptor on the surface of your melanocytes, those cells that make the melanin pigment. So it's the MC1R that determines the type of melanin that our melanocytes make, whether that's the eumelanin, the brown-black pigment, 
or pheomelanin, the reddish pigment? Exactly. Mm. And so when we think about our genes, we have two copies of every gene, one from our mother and one from our father. And these copies that we inherit can come in different versions or alleles. So this variation in the MC1R gene can determine whether or not it gives you uh, sort of these darker pigments or lighter pigments. And these alleles have been associated with everything from red hair and pale skin to freckles. So while we can buy temporary or permanent freckle tattoos that make us look more youthful and mm, sun-kissed, our real freckles are determined by our genes, which are given to us by our parents or whether or not we slather on sunscreen before we hit the pool. Exactly. Thank you so much for answering all my freckle questions, Alex. Well, thank you so much for being here. But now I think it's time that we take off all of these freckles with my cellar water. What? But what is my cellar water? I'll tell you if you head on over to my channel. The link is right up here. You can also go over and subscribe to Ms. Beauty Files channel by clicking here and subscribe to mine by clicking here. And as always, a huge shout out to my Patreon patrons for making fun videos like this possible.